<laughs> <I'm> just- <laughs> That wasn't quite how I was thinking it in my head. <laughs> Photoshop photos oh my wearing those pants. That's oh oh there's no, God. there's no signal like context. No signal context. <laughs> I'm gonna leave now. <laughs> wow, that's welcome something. everybody to Co-op Guild. <laughs> uh so this is our weekly live chat at least as much we can weekly um and yes the pregame chat gets ridiculous sometimes so if you happen to be on our discord and you are a supporter of co-op guild at the highest the five dollar level you could actually listen to these discussions so Okay, Steve, do you do polls? We should do a poll. We should see who feels sorry for Steve right now. We should do a poll as to who feels sorry for Steve. Have you to deal with all three of us already? <laughs> started yet. Okay, okay. I'm back. Oh, you're too good, Steve. Oh, fun. That's fun. Uh, so anyway, yeah. this is impossible, guys. It's impossible. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I want to. This is the first co-op chat um, that we're going to have have people who can call in and talk with us. So I want to kind of describe how that works a little bit. So, like I said, um, because it's just me running everything, I don't have a way of vetting the public as a whole. But if you are a supporter of us, um, if you go into Discord, there's a channel there with instructions and a stage you can join, and you just jump on that stage, raise your hand, and we'll pull you up, and you can chat with us live. So. Very easy to do, so. But yeah, and heads up to we do have a topic we're talking about. But if you want to join live and suggest a different board game topic, you're more than welcome to. So just because we don't say a topic anyway, I'm just not gonna not even go try for <laughs> friendly callers. <laughs> you well, you're planning. Just <laughs> you need to go up. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, I got some friends here though. Hey, Lane. By the way, nice roll. So you got the highest score to that. So how's it going? Uh, so Kim was here. Um, Chris is also here. So sweet. Okay. Let us talk about the topic we're going to do today. So this was suggested by one of our viewers, uh, Jan. Um, suggested this topic. That was a pretty good one. And the topic was. Like how do you how do you play games in the effort to become good at winning them? Um, basically, trying to get up to that maximum difficulty level. And so, like, I kind of start from that one. Uh, does anyone anyone go first? Otherwise, I can start the combo. Go for it, Steve. Okay. So I think the obvious question answer that a lot of people say, we'll just play a lot. Well, that's true, but like I'm gonna dig into that a little more detail. And I think a good example of that would be the LCGs. And I'm gonna focus on Lord of the Rings LCG because that's the one I have the most experience with. And I one thing I've noticed when looking at the LCGs is there are a subset of really good cards, like these staple cards that you want to include frequently in your decks for what for whatever purpose they are. They could be some type of mitigation purpose. It could be that for the cost and cost benefit ratio, it's actually excellent. And so, determining what those are and then kind of populating your deck with that knowledge of those staple cards is going to help you get to that max difficulty. I found the quest. The kicker is how do you determine what those staple cards are? Right. And I know which one. I know one of them. You do? You don't use it. I don't use it. Yep. <laughs> That's the will. <laughs> and he hurts my soul. He it's not just my soul he hurts, he hurts the table's soul. So so what Baron's talking about is there's a card out there called Test of Will for Lord of the Rings, and it basically cancels a bad card. It's really Which, great. You would think would be a good thing, right? That'd be a good thing to do. It's a it's good not. thing to do. It's a great thing to do. <laughs> but uh the problem is I started using it in all my decks and I'm like, okay, well, I'm tired of seeing this card. So I just stopped playing it. And so we go to these big Lord of the Rings games and Terrence, um, he's also on the Discord. He's been on the channel plenty of times. We switched from Marvel Champions. Um, he's like, wait, 
you don't have Tess of Will in your deck? Like, nope. <laughs> it would just drive him nuts. Like, why do you not have that card? We need to win. Like, I don't want to play it. <laughs> so This is why when we go to the LCG thing, Lord of the Rings thing, I sit next to Terrence. And then when we're playing, he'll always turn to me and go like, dude, you got to, bro, you got Tess of Will? I'll be like, <laughs> I always have Tess of Will in my hand. He's like, that's, that's a good player. Good work. Oh, good it's become a thing and so actually what i wound up doing we wound up playing oh skyrim that's right we were playing skyrim yes we did we printed off a small test of will card we snuck it in the deck so that he would draw it <laughs> so that's right so you pick your upgrades and he's like well i don't know why i wouldn't pick this one it's that test of will card. it's that will <laughs> so <laughs> But yeah, so that, that's that is one thing I found that definitely helps is trying to figure out like the, with the staples card in that specific format. I'd say, um, yeah, Max is definitely Steve in the game. Yeah, that's true, Chris. <laughs> Do have that tendency. So, um, how do you guys go about playing uh, the higher difficulties? I know Derek, we tried that recently with Ashes that did not oh, go yeah. well. Yeah, yeah, that that was that was interesting. Um, <laughs> I usually don't, um, honestly. Uh, I think, I don't know. I, I I don't think I've played too many games on like higher difficulty. And the difficulty factor isn't really a thing for me. Um, it's not something I find fun, I guess. Um, especially since it, since I'm a bad dice roller or whatever, that it just seems to make it more punishing, and so it's not really my thing. Um, but for LCGs, uh, it's that's even harder for me because I don't deck build; I suck at it. So this is this yeah. time, this <laughs> yeah this t specific topic <laughs> is probably more of a um, uh, yeah you and Baron uh, thing because it just maximum well, difficulty is not a thing I do. Is I, that I you? What about like Marvel United though? Don't you? I, I still don't maximum difficulty that. I I mean okay. I'll I'll play whenever I test homebrews i play hard mode because those ones who the the players who are like oh i need the most optimal team to beat the apocalypse in three moves i i have to i have to test for them but yeah. Yeah. normal marvel united i play with double wilds i play regular i i try the different variations like secret identity and all these other things but I'm not gonna say, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna play at the hardest difficulty of the game because it's too simple. I don't do that. So is um, is your hardest difficulty in games just when there's dice? Normal mode. <laughs> easy oh, mode. God. My hardest difficulty is easy mode. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I think I think that that's I think that's fair. Um whenever there is any type of any type of deterministic mechanic. That is hard difficulty for me. So I'm always playing on hard difficulty. <laughs> so I, I, I kind of have to agree because I was trying to think of like a game that I've played on hard mode. And I mean, technically it's not a co-op game, but I've, you know, if I was going to bring in the classroom, I thought it would, but I'm um, Turing Machine because it's, you know, deduction and trying to figure out what the code is. And I played it so much that I'm like, you know what? I'm going to try it on hard mode. I don't remember if I succeeded, but it was one of those things of if I have dice, then there's too much out there. I think that it, then it's not me getting better at something, but for that one, it's like, okay, well, I got better at this stage, this stage, this stage, and let's then challenge. So I, I might be kind of hysterically. Like, I don't know how much I strive for hard mode because in most of my solo co-op games i'm like there for the story so i i probably the opposite <laughs> i probably just try to it should be like should i play like a doing buttons and bugs mode? and not just doing probably. it like on the easy mode i'm like oh i guess i'll play on standard but like 100 i was like looking at that zz cards and i'm like i could do that but i mean again even the dice roll there is so minimal that it is probably one that I would consider once I got to know like my character and the cards and things like that better. This one I would consider like playing on a harder level if I wasn't recording at the same time. Yeah. yeah. So I kind of I wonder yeah. then also what the mo what motivates people to Ooh, that's a good play question. on a harder mode. And and Steve, I'd probably pose that question to you. Like what motivates you to Steve mode it? 
a lot of it honestly comes down to me wanting to throw everything in the kitchen sink into the game. Like, for me, I I love writing games. If there's any way to get, like, this mode and this mode, which maybe not officially in the rulebook, are supposed to be played together. If I can, like, do a small house, to, a house tweak, house rule tweak, and so you can play them together, I'm like, yes, let's do it. And that normally bumps up the difficulty in a lot of games. Um, uh, not always, but... Um, also, just... If I've played the game enough, I always want to like start cranking that up a little bit. Um, um, Marvel Legendary is a really good example for us when we play that game. Um, there, I think the official rule. <laughs> the funny thing is, I have to think about this official rule because we never play this way. But you beat the bad guy boss. You hit him three times and you win. Anyway, we hit him an extra time, like four times. Like we have to go through all his tactics cards to win the game. And it's become so common for us, we don't even think about it anymore. So, do you find so there is a hard mode to Marvel United? Yeah, I would say hard mode, hard, Marvel United. Well, we move the wilds. The not not, not wild. United. Sorry, sorry, legendary, legendary. I meant oh, yeah, legendary. Yeah, yeah. So, there's lots of ways to increase the difficulty in that one. There's uh, what's called horror cards. Um, they were introduced in the X Men expansion, and they were also written out in the core rulebook. And there's stuff like the uh, mastermind gets plus two attack or plus three attack or something like when you when you draw a scheme twist, draw an extra card. Um, this is a bunch of these. You can throw a bunch of them in your game to just make it harder. So, but yeah, we always play with uh, it was called Final Blow. It's called Last Stand or something now. I forget. They changed the name of it, but that's where you have to hit the mastermind extra time. We always always play that way. The other way I like playing with is called Growing Threat, and that is every time you hit the Mastermind, they go up in strength by one. So it's, so they, they kind of level up as you hit them more. So, Which makes it really hard for certain one of them, like uh, the Hulk. He does that normally, so now he does it twice as much. <laughs> so. But um, uh. actually, I was going to I was gonna bring up another, suggest another uh, tangent there a little bit, um, but with difficulty, because one thing that does make it challenging to play on higher difficulties is i'm always playing on i'm, I'm very, very frequently as to say introducing the game to newer players and i always start on like the lower the base difficulty level so it's hard to like bring that up um to higher higher max levels yes i think there's a lot of factors in the fact that of, of how to and when to increase difficulty one when we're as being creators, I don't think it's it, we lose a, putting things on hard would definitely increase decrease the amount of length of your videos and potential win con, winning because you're on a harder difficulty. Right now, also you're talking about the LCGs. I think another place where it comes to when you want to that, things that I put on hard mode um, would be something the LCGs, for example. I think a lot of times when you're playing a base game. And that's all you have. And they're like, oh, you can make this harder by doing this. I think that it makes the game harder. Uh, but see, so that's 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 that was absolutely rock solid knowledge. You'll have to remember that when you put it on harder mode, it's, it's harder. That's what I just said. <laughs> so but let me continue. So but when you get like Steve's talking about legendary, Steve's talking about the LCGs, your card pool becomes absolutely ridiculous. You can put combos after combos after all these things. And yeah. that's where a game like something like Lord of the Rings or Ark of Horror or even Marvel Champions, sometimes you need to increase that difficulty, especially if you're attempting to meta the system because you just otherwise it would just be too easy sometimes because you've been you have this immense amount of stuff to pull from to make a game to, to pull into the game does that make sense i know steve doesn't fully do that because he always tries to build decks around like oh hey this card two cards look actually pretty cool together let's see what else i can kind of build around it yeah. but there's people out there they're just like i'm going to build the most powerful craziest deck like even uh derek was talking about like marvel minded i'm going to use these three characters because these three characters combo so well i can take anything down well, you'd have to increase the difficulty if you if to actually have a ha, the boss have any type of chance. Now, I the problem is I don't think a lot of us do that because we, like Jen says, enjoy the game as a whole, enjoy enjoy the story it provides, as opposed to wanting to build the greatest greatest thing ever and never change. Like my son is at that age where he wants to make sure he's got the best, the best, the best, and he's not going to change. He's like go go go! Like I'm going to play this guy because he's the best. Okay. 
well, don't you want to try something else? No, because I know it's the best guy. Oh, okay. We're going to use this guy. Okay, fantastic. Like, <laughs> Dude, do, do, you, do you feel that that takes away from the game, though, when, no. when, there's, when there's someone, not your son, but I mean, in no. terms of uh, players who say, I'm going to play with this combo team because they're the penultimate team and nothing can stand in their way, and I will never play with any of the other umpteen million character combinations that I can do. Do you feel it, t- because the game then has to say, it has to scale because this is this ultimate team that it takes away from the rest of it or not at all? Yeah, I think you're going to miss out on content. I mean, why do you have all this content if you're not going to use it? Um, But also, I think some people really enjoy the challenge of finding that group or finding those card combos or finding that that's like their that's their like that's their thing in life that is the oh this is super Says cool. the min max the min max group yeah, yeah like yeah. i love I've, I've been looking for this I've, I've been trying all these different things and i'm scouring the internet to try to find some good like combos and things like that that oh and i found it so yeah then they don't bring anything else it's like and I, i'm not like when i used to play hero clicks you'd go to the tournaments and Every time I went to the, like, if it was just a weekly tournament, what are you going to win? You're going to win a paintbrush. I mean, it wasn't like you're winning, like, thousands and millions of dollars, right? But you always had, there was always that guy who would bring, like, one of the four alpha teams. And I'm like, what is the point of this? Why Why is this not, why, why, why do you think this is fun? But to him, that was the best, was the most fun he could have was picking the greatest characters and stomping his his friends and well i guess he didn't have any friends stomping <laughs> oh, yeah. his, his competitors into the ground i mean that was the deal we're like i'm sure steve was like me he would bring like oh i'm gonna bring an x-men team and it's yep. like okay and like the x-men team hits the table and like two turns later all you have left is ice man who's making like an ice ramp out of the board because he's <laughs> the rest of his friends are down on the ground yep. um, and i was kind of like that too i'd bring like i mean but then i mean i would the problem is i also was a competitive person so i wouldn't be the most alpha team but i would actually bring a team that would compete against this kind of stuff and i knew i'd lose but i'd have a fighting chance um one of the best stories i had is they used to have they had a uh infinity gauntlet tournament and they actually were winning an actual bigger prize so it was like people were bringing the best it's like i'm gonna this is a great prize and they're like what'd you bring i'm like i brought fantastic four team and they'll look at me like really and i'm like yeah well that fantastic four team got second place because baron's good at the game and so sometimes <laughs> and so sometimes the amount of how good you are at the game if i were to just step it up i've probably been really good at the game but i never used those teams that yeah. were out of control so but there are people in the world that think that that's just their fun Anyway, I've probably missed a whole ton of comments in there. I see that my wife has mentioned that I do. Yes, and it is true. I sometimes secretly put games on hard mode. Um, <laughs> where is it? So we have a game called Paleo. I don't know if you've ever heard of this game. Yeah, Steve taught me that one. It's really good. Really fun game. Good game. Um, if you haven't played it, you should try it. Uh, even it, even Mike likes this game. I shouldn't say that even Mike <laughs> so likes this game, but Mike <laughs> likes this game. And, <laughs> I hope he's not listening because that's not how it's supposed to be. It's not meant to be like that. I did, a lot of times Mike and I don't align. And there's a few times we do. And I know that that means that was a really good game. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's yeah, kind of yeah. what I mean. Um, so Mike really liked it. Colin likes it. It's a good game. Yeah, anyway. It's a good one. So we, I was thinking. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. We got to this game. We did, we did the second mission where like your characters are like more hungry than they're supposed to be. And so you have to feed them two food in order for them to make it through. And otherwise the penalties happen. Right. Yeah. Well, I thought that was the base game. <laughs> and so we were trying we actually did pretty well we got to like the fourth or fifth mission and then we realized we never were going to beat the mission and we're t- and then so i pull a call go, how do you get through this mission because he'd beat them all i was like well i don't know i mean because you have to get, giving the two food to the characters all the time is just so hard it's like wait why are you giving them two food right. <laughs> like what so he's he's usually my savior when it comes to why i'm not winning and then he goes like because you're doing it wrong <laughs> i actually call that gen cam hard mode <laughs> gen cam hard mode, I love it. Gen yep. hard mode because there's so many times like especially with streaming because i'm just so all over the place that i would forget to give myself resources or do all these other things so i don't need to intentionally add difficulty because i inherently <laughs> mess things up to the point that it is definitely gen cam hard mode there you go which is not what but I was um, talking about earlier, just getting that deck that's going to be, you know, great. And it's not, I will never have a deck that's so amazing that it's going to be everything. But then me as a person, I would want to keep adding difficulty to see how hard and how far I could yeah. push. 
that. So then it's kind of weird to me that you just play knowing you're going to win all the time. Like, okay, what's to me, then what's the point? But at that point I would be like, okay, I made this deck or I researched it and stole other people's ideas. And I want to see how hard I can make this. Let's go. Let's see if this is like the best thing ever or not. I, I, I have no idea why you would have like the best deck ever and not try to challenge like your deck in that type of scenario. Yeah. yeah the min max are, I mean, uh, Barrett, you know, as a, as, as kind of a D and D GM, you know, you've run into the min maxer uh, group as well to where they want, you know, the penultimate character who I'm taking one level of cleric, two levels of <laughs> yeah, and what? yeah, and then and then you, <laughs> they they melt monsters and they enjoy that. They're like, haha, you can't beat me. And so it's it's more. Eh, I think I think I, I teach their own for people who enjoy um, min maxing and people who want who only will play with this deck because nothing can beat it and won't try anything else. That's fine. Um, okay. It's just so, more not for me. What about the rest uh, of the people at the table? <laughs> no. Or well, to me though, that's not beating the monsters. I feel like that would be like trying to beat the DM, but then what about the other people at the table that are just like, I am here to play the game and enjoy the story. <laughs> so well, I, I think... Fun... Oh, go ahead, Steve. <laughs> I have a fun story about that, actually. And it ties into Baron's comments earlier. Mm-hmm. So we had a really we used to go to play Hero Clicks um, almost weekly you know, growing up at stores. Me and my brothers and I would bring we bring fun decks. I bring you got it, Baron. I bring X Men. <laughs> I always brought X Men team. You you nailed me on that one. Uh, but my other brothers we bring fun stuff, and they were they were they were good, but not like not like top tier stuff. Um. Anyway, every once in a while we'd have someone join, and everyone was like that too. Everyone brings just fun stuff. Anyway, someone bring um we call cheese. You know, like the. Yep. Oh, like, he's got the cheese. The, all the cheese. Yeah. We're talking about like super powerful, but it's powerful because of this one mechanic they're going to, uh, you know, push the max, whatever. It's within the rules, but it's just not fun to play against. Oh, fantastic. Look, there's Crisis Superman chase figure. This is awesome. This will be super fun to play against. I hate you so much. Exactly. Exactly. So um, what we wound up doing <laughs> is bringing what we bring a team the next week that was specifically designed to defeat that. And but it so can't do anything it, else. They can't, can't do anything else. Yep. yep. We beat that team. Exactly. That's all we do. Can't do anything else. Anybody else we play, you're gonna lose. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's all we did. Do TK so, this one and, guy up who's gonna pulse wave, and then that's it. That's all the thing does. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and so we, we play anybody else, you're screwed. Yep. <laughs> that's exactly what happened. So like we would just knock out the cheese, and people would like learn like, okay, don't bring cheese. Just bring whatever fun team, and everyone has fun teams. We're good to go, right? So, <laughs> but yeah, it was. That's what we did at the the uh, the tournament. So, <laughs> yeah, Yogi. <laughs> I posted a video on. Uh, there's a there's a YouTuber oh, who made yes. a video specifically about this specific topic. <laughs> that's pretty awesome. I have to look for that. That's a that's a great video. I like that one. <laughs> where where they're where they're saying that the person who won't beat you, they'll just tell they'll just tell you how they'll beat you in the right. worst way possible. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's like okay, well, I'm gonna play. Okay, I have one hit point left. You win. No, no, I'm not gonna play it yet. Instead, I'm gonna do these three things, oh, yes. which will wipe this board, put down this ultimate card, which will do double that damage. Okay, I so get, double I get damage. Four you. cheese from the cheese making factory. <laughs> <laughs> I, that video is awesome. So, if it, when it comes back to the difficulty of games, um, th- it, again, it has to do with what you're looking for in the game. I yeah. mean, it, it, there are, I think. The thing is, this is such an odd category for us because I don't think we're min maxers. And right. so I don't know if you have to be min maxer though. Topic to discuss, but I think like if you watch, okay, for example, I'm just gonna bring up Colin because why not just rip on everybody? I ever ripped on Mike, might as well rip on Colin too. <laughs> um, so, Colin, for example, um, he should start playing like if there's a difficulty for like Mage Knight, he should probably maybe boost that difficulty if he can, because now he's played that game so much. He knows the inner combos. It's not that he's min maxing. He just knows the game. Right. He knows the game so much that he could probably boost that difficulty if there's a way. I don't know if Mage Knight has a difficulty. I've played the game twice, by the way. It's like talking about hurting souls. I think his crushed is now i've got birthday candles 
Why are did I use balloons? Are you using teams or something? What happened? Where did that come from? Are you using teams? That's a team. Uh, thank you all. Oh my gosh, I love your community, Steve. They think I deserve birthday balloons. <laughs> How did that, what do, that uh, from? Baron, do two thumbs up. And just hold it. Let's see if it does it. No, oh, it was a camera. Just my hands. They, they didn't do the updates. They didn't do the updates. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck happened? So I don't know. Apparently, the balloons say I'm done talking. <laughs> <laughs> yes, right. Uh, Lindsay had a comment here. I said, "I'll say this: I play co-op with my husband mostly. It would not be enjoyable for him to play hard mode. I would lose him. So I feel it would be too much to handle for me. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. Makes perfect sense." Yeah. yeah, and maybe that's it. Um, I I don't hard mode it because I do play solo and. Uh, oh yeah, I I beat myself at it. Okay. I, <laughs> I also I wonder about I, some of the hard modes. Like I want to bring this up specifically because I know I think we've all played it. I'm pretty sure we have. Uh, Pandemic. Pandemic at the highest difficulty level. I'm not sure it's beatable. Like it is ridiculously challenging. Yeah. And yeah. I kind of feel that might be true for some other games as well, where like the highest difficulty level is maybe not attainable. I don't know. Well, I and and to 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 the other side of that is that maybe that's the draw. Somebody makes a game and they say, you can't beat it at this level, and therefore the hard game difficulty pe people say, challenge accepted. Sure. I mean, and then they go about building... Beat Tetris. You can beat Tetris? <laughs> I didn't even know that. So okay. were you a month ago? Okay, never mind. We'll talk about it later. <laughs> so, but that, that they can, um, that you can, they would do that because they're saying, no, I will beat this game. I will rise to your challenge and beat this game. So that's their draw. That's the fun that they have. Yeah. And I think it also, it, it, I really think again, it's like, what, what's your motivation to play? So I just introduced my husband and son to pandemic a week or two ago if it was so punishing that they never thought that they could win, I'm sure my son would never play games with me like ever again. Yeah. So that's like, yeah. and we're going to start playing pandemic legacies. So we'll see what happens. But um, so, I, I mean, if your enjoyment comes from just like the kind of social aspect and kind of hanging out, then maybe playing on the hardest level isn't going to be for you. But if you're, kind of motivation and goal is just to see like how much you can do how far you can push and beat the thing that's unattainable then you're probably coming at the whole experience from such a completely ass different aspect that you're probably gonna do the things like min maxing and you know whatever else to make that happen so I I, I really think it depends upon what your motivation is is it to I, I don't know because it's that it's not how I work, but that's what I, like I just I just want to have fun, like and you know and uh, or even just like was playing solo. If you're playing on a higher difficulty, then also managing possibly managing more stuff might be uh, depend upon how it was like the higher difficulty level was implemented. Yep. So um, I have a special guest that's calling in oh, um, from overseas. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Oh, oh hey, wow. um, it's Kim. Yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, I want to jump um, a little bit into this, jumping onto what Elaine said a little bit. Um, Steve, Steve mows everything, but knows that, like Jen, you're saying, I just want to have fun, right? But Steve has pulled me along a little bit. He's like, oh, we're gonna make this a little bit harder, and sometimes he doesn't tell me. <laughs> and then, but I mean, still, it's like yep. it's helped me a lot through my own progression in board games. Um, so thank you, dearest, but also, meh. <laughs> <laughs> I've done that a lot to you, I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kim, so, when, are you, when, yeah, are you yeah, cool. when are you getting back in? When you getting back in Raleigh? Uh, I've come back. Thursday next week, Friday, Thursday, mm -hmm. right before Game of Palooza. Don't worry. <laughs> good time, by the way. We are doing Game of Palooza next weekend, so Derek could be here. It'll be good times, like always. So, yeah. Now, only if Colin and Barrett would just and Jen would just move to Charlotte. <laughs> 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 there might and, be a nursing job out there. I bet. 
There might we be had, a lot. Uh, Chris wants to jump on here real quick. Mm. So, hey, Chris. Oh, he's muted. He's gonna mute himself. Mute I can do this. I swear. <laughs> um, so, how does uh, the difficulty of a game affect what you decide to stream or do vods for on your channels? Ooh, one hundred percent. When I streamed, I never played anything difficult because I could. My brain couldn't handle like the game difficulty level, all the tech issues. Remember when you turn my mic on, chat, all of it. I, I, there was no way. That's why I streamed far more simple things. And one of the major reasons why I came to YouTube so I could play games with that are more difficult or higher complexity level without my head exploding. That's one thing that's come up. Um... I've seen frequently, like I, I obviously love Street, uh, Street Masters, do Street Masters, but Spirit Island is the one I want, was supposed to mention. Brain fart through there. Um, but when I stream that in the past, especially when I'm playing a new spirit, I've done a pretty basic difficulty level on that one. People say, Why aren't you playing harder? I'm like, Well, I'm one, learning the spirit, two, I'm playing the game, and then three, I'm also managing the stream and everything too, which is a lot going on, right? And so, one, getting back to Chris's question about how do we choose to what difficulty level unfortunately it i normally lean towards something on the easier side um due to all the streaming stuff depends on depends on what the higher difficulty level adds to the game uh, because i want to keep the pacing moving and keep things going on i don't want to i have to watch the stream and everything too which adds quite a bit um now this is contrary to what makes good content on youtube generally because like if you're looking into the gaming space and what people like to watch, you want to find, you want to have something that's unique. So people are like, oh, I've never seen someone do this. Let me watch that version of the game. They have, they modded it. Let's see what happens, right? And the other one they like to see from a gaming space a lot is expertise. Like, oh, I can do, I'm talking about like video game expert. Like I can headshot from, I don't know, across the map, blah, 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 right, whatever. And so expertise in board games is playing those higher difficulty levels for sure. So yeah, it's a, it's a tough, it's a tough balance. Steve's gonna nose somebody from across the screen then. No scope. Just no scope. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think Steve Steve mentions quite a bit there. I think when it comes to the type like for example, when we stream aliens at, during extra life, I do not play on normal mode anymore. I have played that game so many times that if I do not boost the difficulty, I will never have a challenge. And one of the things I love to have is a challenge. So I think when we're first playing games on like, for, and also when I'm recording games, it's a little bit different because I do have the time to be able to step back, look at the board and kind of go, okay, so if I do that with that guy and I was able to bring this guy up, I could probably do this. So it, you have that extra added, like I can turn the camera off. Okay. Now let me think what I'm going to do here. I'm going to probably have to move this guy up. I do have these three cards. I mean, for example, I was doing Kings of Ruin. I was learning Kings of Ruin. So I had my two decks in my hand, and I was looking at both my cards, and I would turn, okay, we're going to fight this dude. Boom, camera goes off. Okay, now, for yeah. the first one, I'm going to want to play this card so that that can combo into this. Wait a minute, no, this card is going to be able to. So I, now, if I was doing that streaming, I'd, that would be like a 10-minute extravaganza of me talking to myself. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So if you put your game on a hard mode to that point, you're going to have, the, the streamer would be more talking to himself, trying to figure out the best way to get through a situation like that. So being able to video record also gives us the chance to up the difficulty. So again, when I'm playing, for example, Aliens, this time it's War, even if I'm streaming it, it doesn't matter. I've played it so many times. I think that has a factor into whether or not you can boost difficulty and high mo hard modes and things like that into a game. Um, I think the amount you play it, and I think we don't play a game sometimes enough to be able to incorporate that harder mode sometimes, um, depending on what the game is. Like, for example, you guys playing Marvel United, you've played it so many times, I'm sure uh, sometimes putting in all the easy cards, you know what certain bosses and certain characters are going to be able to do. You'd be like, I know this guy's really good. I should probably take out some of those cards. Um, but I'm playing this boss, which I know is one of the harder bosses in the game, so I think I'll keep him in for this one. So you, you know that what you're jumping into, where a lot of times when you're first playing a game, you don't know what you're jumping into. Yeah. Like you said, Steve, you're learning a, a spirit for the first time. This one. So you, you know that what you're jumping into, where a lot of times when you're first playing a Jen, game, we can hear you. I know. I was trying to tell you that. Oh, I was like, my, uh, 
I don't know if that helps, Chris. Comcast but that was it, 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 it. I think it, I think a lot of it has to do with, like Steve said, managing multiple things. So for when I record, I have a better chance of upping the difficulty, but only up the difficulty if it's a game I played a lot and I yeah. know kind of what yeah. what's going on. It's true. Yeah, for for me, it, it's. I don't think it has to do with the difficulty of the game. It's just, hey, this is a game I want to play. So I play it, but I only play it on normal mode. Whether I've played it no times or a thousand times, it's still on normal mode. Only because, I mean, the I, I just gain the joy from doing that. So I don't know if anything determines that. However, I will say I 100% agree with Steve on I have to be very careful because it's just me managing the stream, mm -hmm. all the stuff that goes along with that, as well as keeping track of the rules. So whenever you see, uh, I, I've, you know, whenever you see people say, you know, well, you should have done this and you need to read the manual and stuff. It's like, uh, uh, cool. How about you come do this? <laughs> and let's see how much rules you keep right. <laughs> it's hard. So, it's hard. So it, it's, I think that that's the thing. It, it's just, it's very, uh, it, it's, when it comes to difficult difficult games and it's the reason why i've been meaning to bring mage knight back to the channel to play it it's one barrett says that whole decision space is saying okay well let me stop for three minutes to determine what i'm gonna do and then let me manage yeah. this and then let me make sure okay is, is is latency bad uh what what why is that uh okay uh, what was i doing oh i gotta move Oh wait, you got I, a new uh, comment. What does that say? <laughs> yeah, what then it, you got a new it says comment. no sound. Oh, what? what? My comment says no sound. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Fifteen minutes later. <laughs> so it's it's a lot. I think I think that's the thing. If we, it's a lot to do. Um, everyone on here can attest to that. Whenever it comes to live streaming, it's just more. <laughs> yeah, I was actually thinking about doing a. A, a VOD of some more complex games just so I can, you know, edit all that thinking time that Baron mentioned for sure. So, <laughs> yeah, like but, Spirit Island. I, have I would say, I want to see lead. you do a, a, a pre recorded of Spirit Island. And then also, I, I would, if you did a series on that, I would totally watch it. And then I was thinking, though, if there was a game that I would just love to see, like, almost always see at higher difficulty levels streaming would be robinson crusoe yeah like unless yeah. it's a how to play i always want to see that on some sort of higher difficulty level are you kidding so me hard. That's, you want, yeah you that's like i'm not kidding play. oh you watch, because it's already so I hard it's did already you watch so my learn to play video where i died <laughs> in two turns i mean i was like playing nemesis with derek <laughs> We're not gonna let that go. We're not gonna let that go, are we? <laughs> yeah, two Somebody turns. needs to send me a link to that Nemesis video because I really want to see that. So good, yeah. <laughs> um, the the but, ship you know went down I mean? in flames real fast. It was unbelievable. Because it's supposed to be so difficult, and everybody knows how difficult it is. So then it would be like, let's see how fast we can die. Like, <laughs> right. You're probably not gonna, but if you're going from it that perspective, Let's... I would watch anybody stream. I would watch like, I don't know a cat playing on a high, like whatever. I I would watch a, on high difficulty level just to see how fast people die. But that's more fun that fun standpoint. Every time standpoint. I play a game with dice. <laughs> so, Every time I play a game with dice. Jump in Does this count saving Jet A all the time in Robinson? Oh my God. <laughs> Okay, oh, I did gotcha. watch it though. I did watch it. I mean, I started like twitching halfway through. Oh. <laughs> like PTSD full on. I don't know. I don't have it set up. Uh, okay. Let's so, <laughs> try up Jenny on the screen. <laughs> no, I, will, I would like, I do know, I, talk, I, I understand Derek's idea of like wanting to enjoy the game and things like that. But believe it or not, I actually don't like games where I can stomp straight through them. I like to be challenged. I really so if I play a game and I realize, hey, that was pretty easy to play, I will boost that difficulty because well, I I don't well, like even when it's just a story game, like say you're playing um what's your what's a good game? Um uh what does Derek play all the time? Uh <laughs> Gloom and Killforth. Let's say I'm playing Gloom and Killforth because now I gotta rip on him because I've done Mike, I've done Colin, <laughs> I'm ready, I'm ready. So do say it. I'm playing Gloom and Killforth, right? 
And I've played it 70, 80 times, but I never want to change the difficulty on it because I really enjoy the way the story goes. Now, it'd be hard for me to do that because I know the game so much to be like, okay, I know if I go, to, when this place shows up, I know what kind of thing I'm going to need for that. If I, this place shows up, and I just would feel like, well, I'm just moving pieces around now. You know what I mean? So yeah, I'd like I to have that challenge, which is like I said, I played my I played my aliens this time. It's war. Oh, there went all my tools um, on the ground. So many times the themes in I like not only like they they recommend like oh hey when you see the red number put three aliens in instead of two. No, I put two on that one, and all the other ones I put three because I really have cranked this thing up so yeah. high. I think it's know, like I, okay. I think I it's not about moves. I think it's not about walking through it easy. It's where the challenge comes from for me. Sure. So so I. Your challenge Ranger. is rolling dice. Well, <laughs> Earthborn, right? Earthborn Rangers, um, I I really like that game because the challenge was in not, oh, I need to deck build perfectly. It was how I play my cards. Hmm. Um, and I and I enjoyed that challenge. So it's more give me give me the uh the different options and variants of of how to play my cards. And I will enjoy the game. But mm -hmm. if I'm like, oh, all right, first play, one monster, roll dead. Second monster, roll dead. Third monster, roll dead. Problem solve game beat. I won't enjoy that. Right. However, I don't I don't like games where a failed roll, a bad a, a one bad decision pandemic that creates this spiral that you cannot recover from like that that to me and then people are like oh yeah well if you would have played card three on turn six you would have been fine and beat the game in seven turns that's that doesn't do anything for me yeah. but if it's oh no you can you have a deck of cards um Slay the Spire is one of them, where deck builders are kind of where my challenge lies, where I get to choose what I want to do, and then I could choose something else and get these different combos instead of coming in with a pre-made deck that I need to think through how I'm going to play. Um, uh, the things that I struggle with, um, and I love this game, but is Arkham Horror. I struggle with it because if I haven't played the scenario before, I don't know what to bring. And so therefore right. I go into the game bringing what I think might work and then get completely stomped. Mm -hmm. So and then, then it's the, like, the okay, is, well, not... let me go back and now mm -hmm. that I know what to expect, do this. And then all of a sudden it's no fun for me. Right. Well, I, I, uh... All you need is the, 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 the hammer. And you don't want <laughs> slash hammer. <laughs> I had like that hammer. What hammer did I use? I used like this like ungodly like yeah, the sledgehammer. <laughs> I no, it wasn't the sledgehammer, it was like this like it was like the hammer of the gods or something. I don't know what it was. Mm -hmm. But it was absolutely amazing. If that card came out, we won the scenario. That was the deal. Um <laughs> and so having that card, you'll want to maybe boost the difficulty, right? I don't know. Um but to your yeah. point with Arkham Horror, there are so many people out there that that is their game. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And so like you can like when I was deck building, I could just go on there and be like, hey, I need to find a deck for this. And then in the end, even though I watched these videos about what deck to use, I didn't. I had somebody else build it because I still suck at deck building. Well, well, but do you do you want to say, hey, I need to go to, to Arkham DB to get a deck to play Circle Undone? Or do you just want to play the freaking game? And then I think well, that's where I run into. It's not I don't want to have the ultimate deck to just mm -hmm. just so I can enjoy a game. I want to just pop the game open, play it, have a good time, and be done. Yep, <laughs> and, and that's what the starter decks are all about. I think they're great. Yeah, that's why they started them. Yeah, that's why they started doing these starter decks for people to 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 do that too. But it's just, I love Arkham. I think it's great. It's just more, it, I, I my fear with Arkham comes into my fear with Mage Knight, comes into my fear with, with any other deck builder. It's not about the game. My fear is with the community because when people are diehard and you don't play optimal, <laughs> they become jerks about it. And, well, and, I, and, and while you're not supposed to take that stuff to heart and, to, and have a hard skin to it, it, some of that stuff gets through and it sucks. And it makes me not want to play it. Right. I, I And we, Colin and I talked about Arkham Horror and we know that next time we play it, we're not going to include that Cyclopean hammer ever again. <laughs> because we realized that we 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 basically won every scenario after that after that card was included, and so we thought okay. And but again, when I'm playing live stream again, you're talking live stream. You've got I'm managing my stream deck kind of 
and you've got like your mics that work kind of. Yeah. And, like, <laughs> well, all this kind of is working. And then you're trying to play Arkham Horror. I mean, thank goodness I have Colin over here who's like the master of making sure everything's going right. Yeah. Where I'm the master of the technology thing, right? Yeah. And so yeah. you kind of want that at least a little bit of an edge in those type of situations. Now, if I was yeah, playing and that's my wife upstairs and that's by fair. herself, maybe throwing it a little bit harder would be okay, but I don't think she would enjoy it because she doesn't play that game enough. If we, So I don't know. It, it's, it's a fine line. This hard thing is a fine line, but I do like to be challenging games. And so it's hard for me to, when I play a game over and over to not like it as much, if I don't make it more of a, it starts getting easy and easy and easy. Yeah. Yeah. I get that. Yeah, yeah, Yogi I says that everyone deserves to play with a Cyclopean hammer at least once, and then put it on the ban list. <laughs> so, <Yes. laughs> Man, that card was so nuts, unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. So, and, and uh, like the like I said, I I think I I res- I get like I respect the deck building community so yeah. much because or even just they, anything they else, like a person, like for example, Spirit Island. I respect the Spirit Island like diehards. Yeah. That like that's their game. That's what they love to play. That's they like to like really challenge themselves by being able to beat every one of yeah. those like spirits on hardest difficulty and things. That's that's the, that's the, that's the, that's important to them. And like we've talked, it's not really important to us. I don't think, except for maybe a few games. Like for me, Aliens. I played it so many times. I still love it to the death. But so, I don't think I could ever go back. Now Nemesis. You... I don't think I need to boost the difficulty on that. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes that's the other thing. Sometimes you've got games that were built perfectly for, for the difficulty. And they're like, oh, let's increase the difficulty. Why would you do that? <laughs> it's like playing Doom and going like, oh, I'm going to put it on shoot me in the face mode. It's like, why do you need to do that? This game's hard enough as it is. I'm uh, on Mommy Cry Me a River. That's what I play on. I mean, <laughs> and I still die. So, I mean... <laughs> Sometimes I believe the games are built perfectly to be able, and they and that's through playtesting, and they've built that mode that's really a good standard mode that can be difficult and challenging, and you just sometimes don't need to boost the difficulties. Yeah. So something you said earlier, Baron, I think is kind of interesting. Um, you were talking about like you need that challenge yeah. to come back to for the game to hit the table for you. Um, I don't know if that's true for me particularly. Like I, I'll just try to win. But I'm honestly, I don't care if I win or lose, which is interesting because I also steve the game. I like to make it harder, but it's not because I care about winning or losing. I just want to make the game harder. Yeah, see what you happens. want to be challenged. What's that? You want to be challenged. I I don't I don't know if I want to be well maybe. Well, it sounds like it. If you want to boost the difficulty, like you want to change and tweak things to make it harder for you, you're wanting it to be more of a challenge instead of it being easy as it was when you first played it. Well, I think it's too add variety most of the time. But uh, Kim just jumped on. I think she got, she's probably going to say something embarrassing to me. <laughs> Do it, Kim. Do it. Barrett, you are right. He <laughs> wants a challenge. He doesn't want to admit it. <laughs> no. He yeah. wants to say, like I'm all daisies and rainbows, and I want I just want to I want to enjoy the game. No, he if he's played a game a lot of times, he wants to tweak it a little bit to see what could happen if he pulls things this way, turns the dial that way, and make it a little bit different and make it tougher. Yeah, I, I yeah, I think... that's exactly it. I think Steve, um, you may I know you're saying you don't really see it that way, but when I watch you, you know, play a game five times and you're analyzing one move versus another move or a card or wherever the whatever it is, it's you're trying to figure out how to make your mechanic work to meet the challenge that you've, like you said, you've steeped the, steeped the game, you've made it just that much harder. So you're constantly pushing yourself. So I, I do see Baron's point here. So yeah. so the challenge, but not necessarily the winning. I can see that. Yeah. Because I don't give a win or lose, win. but I do like the challenge. I, 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 I get that. It's, yeah. it's the experience. It's like you yeah. want to yeah. just constantly improve and that's just type like you do that in everything honestly yeah no i can I mean, see you think that. about it we've been doing primal and primals would not be as fun if it didn't come to like oh my gosh we got like two turns to beat this guy we got to try to do this damage okay well this comes in this is oh we did it like you know it's like it's it's just that super good feeling when you like yeah. i mean if we'd have it's like oh hey we got to do 42 damage in by we have nine turns to do it do you think we can do this con well we do 20 damage a turn we should be just fine so it's like just poop the cards on the table and be like, yay. Jan's got a good question. Ever... Pull up here. He says, do you make the game harder just to solve a different puzzle? That's interesting. Yeah. I, I'd say See, yes. I like that. i say yes. Because if that's the way you're changing it, then... 
or kind of like saying earlier about um, making a strategy or whatever. So it, it's always working, but something that actually has to forces you to change your strategy that I like, cause I don't know if that's changing the difficulty, but it's changing the way you have to think about it. That's something that's more like yeah. that I would enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like, I like challenging thought puzzles that, that come up. So uh, I enjoy those style of, um, uh, of when we talk about challenges, I like challenges that make me think about what I want to do. Not, okay, I'll think about what I want to do. And then it all falls apart because I rolled a die that rolled a two. So it's mm. I, I like I like puzzles in that aspect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, games that uh, I'd probably say a game that is right up my alley that I love because it makes me fully break things down in my mind is Rummy Cube. Like it's an older game, but Rummy Cube is my jam because there is <laughs> you, have to, you have to figure it out. <laughs> Sorry. That was not ever the game a name I thought would ever come out of your mouth. <laughs> yeah, I love Romy Cube. I used to play with people who were like pros of that game. And I, I just loved how you had to move the, the way the different tiles and how you had to line things out. And you only had one shot at it. You had my brain used to break that thing down and I loved it. There we go. <laughs> yeah. And he loves Romy Cubes. He loves the strategy. He loves the challenge. <laughs> one thing i will say though as far as like a campaign goes because since i am mostly there for the story if it's one of those things that it gets difficult and you can't fail forward i do not want to have to play yeah, the same yeah. scenario four or five times to continue especially a game that's already going to take forever to play so if there's like a way to fail forward i think i'd be more willing to try like at a harder difficulty you know whatever but if it's one of those things that i'm like oh well uh, if i have to keep doing this seven times then you know what i'm probably going to want to go the other way so i can continue so that would be at least for me like a factor of like you have away. nailed it on the cyclopean hammer <laughs> stay away from <laughs> stay away from deep madness stay I'm away from deep madness. i i i'm a big fan of fail forward i'm not a big fan of fail and redo it over and over again yeah. because you're a moron and you can't figure it out you can't win <laughs> that is not a fun game yeah especially like when it's an 80 hour campaign game i think all campaign games should have fail forward That's i game. plan on doing fail fail forward for uh gloomhaven because i'm like it's too many scenarios if i have to or even when i did isla and something shiny like i think i had to redo a couple of the scenarios and i'm like i don't want to play this for two months yeah. like and it's not that i didn't enjoy the game but because there's different endings you couldn't just i mean with gloomy you just be like ah forget it like i'm just gonna keep going but with that one i couldn't and i'm like but for this thing that i thought i was only gonna play like six times am i going to play it fifth times in this playthrough so yeah there I, I have to be able to fail forward if i'm going to increase difficulty levels the chick hits it on the head too He's, they, they say that i think campaign games can be fail forward if you make them that and we do i mean when i did when rob you know, colin and i streamed osworn if we lost to the boss we just went kept going because we didn't need the we love to see what the boss did, how to fight him, and what he does in the game. But once we we're playing through it, the, when we saw it, we played it, we and we died. That's fine. So the narrative says, like, "Oh, you're standing over Rubio's body," and he said, "Nope, we weren't standing over his body. He was he crushed us in the next week." But that's okay. <laughs> the story tells us that because no, it's fine. And so it, obviously that was it's not a fail. It's not technically a fail forward game, but we make it that. And yeah, you can do that easily with campaign games. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I think that's fine. So again, if there's a, if you want to increase the difficulty and lose every battle, that's fantastic for you if that's what you want to do. But um, yeah, it, it's it can be done. You're right. You're if right. if the game doesn't have fail forward necessarily, do you ever do um, I say like multiverse mode where like oh you know, instead of drawing that one card, let's draw this next card in the deck that, that you know the no, card that killed this. I will brutally get punished and then move on. Okay. <laughs> 
that is what I do. Okay. I'm like, oh, you won the day this time, Rubio, but next time, <laughs> Rubio, I will get you. We'll play it again oh, in five years. Yeah. I think I started doing that because when I streamed Deep Madness, I lost that game and had and redid two other videos. And I was like, this is stupid. I don't want to do this anymore. So every time I lost, I kept moving forward. Yeah. Deep Madness was the first nemesis type game where it's like, oh my gosh, I never have enough to be able to get what I need done. And all of a sudden I'm dead or in a doornail. Yep. And I love it. I'll retry it scenario one. I mean, if I'm just playing for fun, I'll replay it more. But like if I'm doing it, filming it, editing, I, I, I will retry it depending upon the game and how long it takes. But there's going to be a limit. Like there's just, and then even just in like off, camera there I, I only have so much time like, there's just only so much time no <laughs> i i also think a problem with it with our this topic for us is the fact that a lot of us are not hardcore euro players and i think a lot of your difficulties and adjustings and things like that you find a lot of that in euro games because mm -hmm. a lot of them are point chase games solo and so being able to up the difficulty for example like i was looking at what game did i do Feast of Odin. And they're like, oh, you can make it a normal, standard, hard, super hard, and why are you even trying to play this game mode? Yeah, and I was like, yeah. I don't think I'm... I'm going to go on easy mode. Yeah, I barely won. And of course, I cheated nine times. So... Okay. <laughs> so I, guess, that boy, guys. That yeah, was the, I love that video, though. So I am coming right. from this conversation right now as more of the non hero side. I would pro I'm more likely to increase difficulty level... Yeah in euro because that is as yep. you're familiarizing yourself with the game mm -hmm. you know so that's a little different i'm far yeah. more likely to me, probably increase difficulty <laughs> in a euro game because then it, uh, solo i mean obviously solo yep. still because then it is a beat your own score or you start beating the ai who cheats or whatever but if it's a beat your own score and you're you know eventually you're going to cap out because you got good at it Right. But thank you for reminding me that I need to break out Feast for Odin. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Break that out. I, I, it should be played about, right about, I don't know, draft time when the Vikings move up two picks. And the, the best that's, uh, that's when that should I still need to punch into a region expansion, mm -hmm. but yeah, that, even, that, was, even, that one will happen at some point. Yeah, even with Euros, I don't increase the difficulty. I just enjoy them for what they are, and then when I get bored with them, I'm like, eh, and then move on to the next Well, then thing. increase the difficulty if you get bored of it. Well, I mean, like, I don't want to, is the thing. I don't want to okay. increase the difference. That's fine. You're done with it. But I get it. But I, I get people who do to, to, to get a better score. So I understand what you're saying. See, that's why, I mean, and, and that's why we have a rotating game collection a lot of the times. Back yeah. then, like, <laughs> I've played this game like six times. Got it. This was super cool. Call it. Let's see what comes in. Oh, same game, different theme. Let's give it a shot. Boom. Okay. Oh, this is super cool. Beat it six times. Call it. Oh, it's good game. Boom. Same game, different theme. Oh, hey, I beat Pandemic. Fantastic. I'm going to get the Star Wars. You're, you're letting Boom. out the secret of all board gaming, man. Yep. It's all the right there. There you go. Let it all out for you. That's it. Oh, man. Got distilled. Boom. Beat it five times. Going to discard that one. Oh, I'm going to get like. Oh, no, but I'm, they I'm just came out like, with the expansion. I'm going to. See, there you go. That's another one. All of a sudden, we got expansions coming in. Oh, and now the thing goes back up. Boom. Distilled that's right here. And I think that's another thing when it comes to difficulties, adding the expansions. Like, we have Arkham Horror 3rd Edition. Well, I've also got all the expansions for Arkham Horror 3rd Edition, right? So then do I need to boost the difficulty because I have all this extra stuff that I can do for my characters that make them a little bit more powerful? Maybe I need to boost the difficulty. I mean, it's, I think uh, expansions also change that. But they also may already include the boost of difficulty because they have probably play tested it, we hope. Okay, well, I think... I admit, though, I play less Euros since I started hanging out with you all, though. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see how many Euros I have. Still looking. I would have a lot more Euros if they were more, like, pure co-op Euros, honestly. It's just no, that doesn't few. matter to me. So We actually play a lot of Euros competitive with Colin and Sven, uh, mm -hmm. in our, our gaming group. That's a lot of what we do. Cool. Well, I think there's about about time for our co-op chat here. Um, I didn't want to mention one other thing. Um, I did do a top twenty list, and in that list, I talked about them there. But I'll, I'll be I'll be plugging this in on a lot of videos. But I uh, I created a form um, to gather everyone's best cooperative games. Very simple. Go on there. You can put in one to five 
of your favorite cooperative games. And I'm going to keep this form open for about, uh, well, into May. At the, the last Wednesday of May, I will compile the list and do a video sharing what uh, everyone's picked. So it'll be kind of fun, like, uh, I, I don't know, viewer best cooperative games. So to find that, I did drop a link in the live chat at the beginning of this. Um, go to our Discord and the announcement section. There's a, list, there's a link there as well. Or just ping me anytime. Um, I should probably drop it in the description of this video too, so I guess I can find it. But yeah, so go fill it out because I'm really excited to see what everyone says. And don't paint eyes, Jan. There's no reason <laughs> to paint the eyes. No reason. Just wash it over. I don't know about you, Derek, but I never paint the eyes on characters. My nope, here, here. There, look at this person's eyes. No nope, no eye, no eyes on that character. Just painted the skin tone right over it. I agree with you. 100%. None of that. Paint eyes very young. So nope. <laughs> nope. Learned that. Yeah. I learned that the hard way when I painted all my Warhammer figures. All my characters like this. <laughs> <laughs> one eye. I've got the other one's up here. Yeah. <laughs> like, nope, done with this. Cool. So that's going to end it for today. Um, Derek, what do you got come up on your channel? Um, it's 10 o'clock, so I probably say, um, sure, why the hell not? In like an hour, I'm going to play Splice, uh, Slay the Spire. Why not? Oh, awesome. wow, that's awesome. What the hell? I'll get the, I'll get the thumbnail up. Uh, tomorrow, I will be playing the um, homebrew of Return of the Sinister Six a campaign for Marvel United. Are you up in the difficulty? Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> um, Tuesday, I'm trying to think of what to play. It might be Kenfire Delve. I don't know yet, but I'll figure it out. And then uh, Thursday is um, Aeon's End Legacy, Friday Game of Palooza. Uh, what you got coming up, Jen? So I will have more uh, buttons and bugs coming up. I am recording my first um, play of Seventh Citadel today. So it is on the table, ready to go. Uh, and we might start on some Kings of Ruin. It's just going to depend upon how many hours in the day <laughs> there is for uh, filming and editing that because it's I don't think uh, either of these are going to be quick turnarounds, but those are the things I'm working on. And I'm starting to work on some things that will be coming in the future that I will be sharing in the future. That's mysterious. I try. So things Love that it. are in the future that you're sharing in the future? Yes, I'm working on something that I'm not ready to share yet, but I'm excited for it. So new things, new New things coming. Cool. Cool. Good. All right. Barrett, what do you got? Nothing new. All right. Um, well, Colin's got some new stuff coming. He's doing, a, he already told me he's doing like Dawn of the Zeds. He's doing, which one are you doing, Derek? Which one are you playing tonight? Slay the Spire. Yeah, he's doing that one too. He just got it. Um, oh, sweet. And he's doing something else. I forgot what it's called. Uh, he, and I think his Red Dragon Inn one is probably dropping today. Um, and then lo and behold, those four videos for Colin are coming out and me, I'm going to try to get the next episode of the seven Citadel up and running. That's my goal for this week. Um, then Colin and I are join, joining each other Tuesday to do primal. I might do another painting stream because we painted up one of the characters for Kings of Rune. We got to get the El, El Gun painted as well. We didn't get him done yet. We got, what's her name? Uh, Girdwin done. Um, so we might do another painting episode this week. We'll see. Um. I think that's about all I got coming up. I think. Uh, what else do I got coming up? Anything exciting? I don't think so. Primal, right? You, did you yeah, we're primal? primal on Tuesday. Yeah. We're gonna try to. We're gonna try to crush the next boss. It was oh my gosh! But every every fight in that's epic, man. You awesome. love it, Derek. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll check it out next year, December, whenever yep. they yeah, decide the to ship my game. About it, Derek, it's, 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 it's all card play. Yeah, by the time the game's over, it's card. <laughs> you never about dice. And it's difficult enough as it is, so it's super fun and With, super fun. Yeah, which is what I like. I like that type of challenge. You got, you yeah. got everything you need, figure it out. Like, yep. I like that. It's, it's whether or not you get the puzzle and the right cards. Um, yep. So, And I also have to talk to my friend, uh, Derek, the resident 7th Citadel expert, expert, <laughs> expert, 
um, because I'm going to be moving into one of the uh, uh, what do you call it? Those threats? Is that what they're called? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I gotta I, I gotta pick his brain as to what he's found uh, does decently in the game and see if there's a and okay. maybe move in that route. Yeah, I know well. you haven't played a ton of it, but you played more than I have. And so you have, you have some <laughs> I, I will try my best to answer what I can. Or you can watch him pummel me into the ground by telling me all the wrong stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you totally want to go this route with your guys. <laughs> no, I wouldn't do that. But, but no, I, I think, did. yeah, your videos are amazing. So well done, well done on those. And yeah, usual. good luck with Kings of Ruin, Jen. I'm super excited to watch your three and a half hour video. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I, after today's sure sleeping it. gods one yeah. of the sleeping god videos just recording i mean some of it was like my husband coming and talk but i think it was eight hours of recording so right. that like got condensed down so uh, right now I, i'm like still kind of recovering from that so i'm super excited for kings of ruin but i'm also like oh my gosh is this gonna be an eight hour day that i need to prepare yeah, like meal that. plan for <laughs> like all the those things chapter first. kings of ruin can stop three times i played through only two of the first parts of the first chapter even though my video says full chap first chapter it's like well kind of i played through two parts of it okay okay yeah, yeah so, so I, i'm probably gonna do the tutorial first so i'm also as i'm also learning to play and then we'll 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 get into it but i'm i'm super excited for it and i'm super excited for uh seven citadel but i i know that both of them are very time consuming yeah so steve, steve, steve what are you doing we're gonna save the best for last yeah <laughs> not sure about that but okay um i think monday because i've got the urge to play this again is bring back ashes so i'm probably play oh. ashes on monday Ashes a Phoenix Reborn, Phoenix Born. Ashes Are you Reborn for the Never Set. Uh, I don't have that yet. Okay, it's still not available because I was dumb and missed the thing. I I fixed it for the next one though. I'll get the next one right away, <laughs> but not this one. So, but I'll do that Monday and Wednesday. I haven't quite decided what I'll cover yet. Um, I've got a few ideas. Um, uh, that's bumped around the head. I got to figure out which one to do. Um, and then prepping for uh, Game of Palooza for that weekend. Um, also, off camera, I've got I'm covering three different previews, so that's been a focus as well. So, trying to get those videos done and recorded, so we can we can um, move on to other stuff. Oh, so that's right. We've got the. Can you guys please say the name of the game for me so I don't screw it up? Which one? The one that Colin's doing the playthrough of for the preview. What I don't know what you're talking. It starts about. with an E. Uthia. Thank you. Not saying that name. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh doing. my gosh. Uh, is Game of Palooza in a week or in two weeks? In next weekend. Ne yep, next okay. weekend. So in a week. Okay, cool. Yep. Yep. And I'll um I'll try to prep all those so you guys can jump on those streams. So it'll be it'll be fun. Oh, can I say one thing that I'm not technically a part of, but I'm kind of a part of before we go? If sure. anybody has um, time this weekend, it is um, Extra Life Tabletop Weekend and Tabletop Live Network over on Twitch um, from yesterday through tomorrow. Um, as a team, they're trying to raise 10000 I'm not sure what they ended at last night, uh, but they're doing giveaways all weekend and all of that, but obviously helping you know, helping the kids and you can find the schedule with links to all the streamers and times at uh, tabletoplivenetwork.com. Awesome. Yeah, that's great. I do that every year too. Um, I don't do the tabletop one, which is weird. I should probably do that too, but <laughs> go check it out. It's a group for great cause. Well, so. and it was cool because this year it was, it's like an official collaboration between um, TLN and uh, Extra Life. So awesome. Um, yeah. So it's, it's pretty cool. A lot of people, I am not streaming uh, for it this time, but if you have time at, or can help out, go go check it out because it's definitely a fun weekend. Yeah, cool. Steve, you've got extra life. We're, we're doing extra life again this year, right? Yeah, I do it every year. I, uh, I focus on the the main day, okay, which is in November, okay, September. Yeah, the game weekend. Yeah, I, I gotta check. I gotta check. I forget, but we got we got. A few months left yet, yet. So, cool. Right. <laughs> okay. So, cool. 
I think it's going to end it for today. Thanks, uh, Jen, Baron, and Derek for joining on this chat. And thanks for people who uh, decided to call in as well. So like I said, if you're interested in doing that, um, just to support the, be a, one of our supporters, either on Ko-Fi or Patreon, either one works. And then we'll have access to that. So cool. No okay. Patreon Renaissance. I know people Ren want me to say that. Everybody, I, I turned the chat off because all they wanted me to do is say that. <laughs> <laughs> I can't okay. say it. Cool. Thanks everyone for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. Take care.